Hey what's up everyone, my name is Andrew and in this video I'm going to restore, repair and upgrade something very interesting and very special, the Dell Precision M6600. Well, why this laptop is so special? This is a high-end workstation laptop that is totally upgradable and I wish any laptop to be upgradable like this one. When I got this laptop, first I cross over a long process of testing and making all the checks. And this is what I found on this laptop. So cosmetically, this laptop is in a verge condition. Over the case, the laptop has some scratches. The scratches especially are noticeable over the top case. The bottom case and rest of the case has some scratches also, but is in a little bit better condition. The other problem is the display. Actually, the display is not working. This is happening when the display electronics are damaged. And in this case, I think that the green channel is gone. This cannot be repaired and the only solution is replacing the display. Well, the next problem is the battery. The battery is not holding power even a second. But however, this is very expected. The other problem on this laptop is the both disks. So I got this laptop with one 120GB SSD and one 500GB hard disk. The SSD unfortunately is totally dead and that's pretty bad. And the 500GB hard disk has some bad sectors and about a 60% of life. And the last thing is the laptop temperatures are very high. Probably this laptop is never cleaned from the insides before. Well, let's start, back this laptop in a function again and do some very good upgrades. And first I will start with a full teardown. I will separate all parts, because I need to check all electronics in detail, but also I'm going to clean this laptop in detail. Well, I'm not done yet, but this is for what I'm talking about. Except that this laptop has a fully upgradable RAM and CPU, this laptop also has a fully upgradable GPU. This is a real laptop's dedicated GPU that is upgradable and it's very rare to see in today's laptops. Well, now let's continue with the teardown process. Well, and this is it. Now I will move to the cleaning process. And first I will start with cleaning the motherboard. 
To clean the motherboard, I used dry cleaning. I used two brushes, one is a normal soft brush and the other is a very soft makeup brush. Now, after I clean the motherboard, I move to cleaning the GPU. So here I start with the dry cleaning first. I used a soft brush and a spotter stick. Also, I had to be very careful because the GPU chip has some small components that are covered with a very dry thermal paste that is like concrete. And after I remove the dry thermal paste, I clean the GPU using a cotton bots and 96% isopropyl alcohol. Well, after I finish with cleaning the GPU, I move to clean the other electronics from dust and dirt. After I finish with cleaning all the electronics from the inside, I move to cleaning the keyboard. To clean the keyboard, I use the two brushes again. One soft and one very soft brush. But also I used a cotton buds and 96% isopropyl alcohol. The alcohol I use it to clean the keycaps and the back side of the keyboard. Well, and this is the keyboard. It's almost like a brand new. But now I move to the next process of cleaning, and that is cleaning the cooling fans and the heatsink from dust and dirt.
After I finish with cleaning the dusty cooling fans, I move to cleaning the heat sink. Well, after I finish with the basic cleaning, I move to the washing process. In a plastic container, I put a warm water and dish soap. And now again, in detail, I clean and I wash the heatsink. Actually, this is the only way in detail to remove all the dust and dirt and make the heatsink like a brand new again. After everything is done with the cooling fans and the heatsink, now I move to returning the rubber pads and mounting back the GPU fan to the heatsink. Well, and this is it. The heatsink and the cooling fans are ready. Now let's move to the laptop case. So here, first I start with removing the stickers from the top case. Well, after I removed the stickers, I found that these stickers are hiding some additional scratches, but nothing too serious. So now I start with removing the glue that left from the stickers. And to remove this glue, I used a 96% isopropyl alcohol and acetone or nail polish remover with a very high percentage of acetone. The acetone actually is not really recommended to be used to laptops, except if the laptop case is made from metal, like this laptop case. If the laptop case is made out of plastic, then there is a high risk to damage the case. Well, now, after I finish with removing the stickers, I move to cleaning the case from dust and dirt. The top case and the mid case where the keyboard is, I clean it using a brush and 96% isopropyl alcohol. Actually, I done this because on these both parts there are electronics. And the case that is without any electronics, like the bottom case, the bottom cover, the display bezel and the plastic around the keyboard, I wash it using soap and water. And 
as a final thing I moved to polishing the top case. I have done this because the top case has a lot of scratches and this is the perfect way to remove it, the polishing. But because I don't have any tools to polish the case, I done this by hand. And this process takes much longer than usual. But the final result is totally great. The case become very smooth, all scratches are gone except one, which is a deep scratch but is not really noticeable. Well, meanwhile I was in search for the display and some upgrade parts. And because I want to save a little bit, instead of buying a new display, I bought a used display. And because this is a used display and it comes with some dirt, I have to cross over one more cleaning process. So to clean the display, I used a 96% isopropyl alcohol, but mixed with anti-static glass cleaner, a few soft cleaning clothes, cotton buds for the corners and soft brushes. Also, this display has the same resolution as the old display, Full HD or 1080p. But this is anti-glare display. I mean, it is not a crystal bright as the old non-working display. And personally, for me, this is a better option. Well, and this is how the display is looking after the cleaning. And fortunately, the display has no scratches. I'm telling this because these cheaper displays may come with some scratches. So that is the risk of buying a cheap and used display. Well, now everything is ready and next is assembling the laptop and making some upgrades. Well, let's load down at the GPU. This is AMD Fire Pro M6100 with 2GB of GDDR5 memory. Actually, I want to upgrade this GPU, but unfortunately I didn't find something better. So for now, I'm gonna left this GPU. Well, now let's slow down at the CPU. So now I'm going to upgrade the CPU. Instead of Intel i7 2620M, I will upgrade to Intel i7 2670QM. So what is the difference here? The Intel i7 2620M is a 2 cores 4 thread CPU that supports maximum 16GB of RAM. And the Intel i7 2670QM is a 4 cores 8 thread CPU that supports maximum 32 GB of RAM.
Well, now let's do the next upgrade. And the next upgrade is the RAM. Instead of 8GB of RAM as before, I will upgrade to 32GB. Also this is the maximum. Maybe this is a little bit too much for this laptop, but I really want to max out some upgrade and to see how this laptop will work later. Well, and now I'm on the final upgrades and the final changes. And the final upgrade is the storage. As a primary disk, I will use a 480GB Kingston SSD. And a secondary disk, I will use a 2TB normal hard disk, which is going to be a data disk or disk for softwares and games. But however, instead of CD-ROM, I can mount the third disk. But I think this is going to be a very unnecessary on this laptop. And the final thing is the battery. The original battery is not working and I found a new replacement battery. But unfortunately, it didn't arrive on time while I make this video. So I will need to mount the battery later when the battery will arrive. And with the new battery, this laptop will be complete. Now, after finish with assembling the laptop, I move to installing the Windows 10, set up the windows and installing all necessary drivers. This laptop actually has connected a Windows 7 Pro license, but when I installed the windows, the Windows license was not recognized as usual. And in this case, I had to enter the Windows license manually and I crossed over a simple process of online activation. Actually, the Windows 7 and the 8 keys can be still used on Windows 10 to activate the windows without crossing over the upgrade process. And finally, after making all these changes, this is the final result. Well, now let's take a look at this laptop. Nowadays, this is over a 5 or 6 years old laptop, but with the upgrades that we did in this video, this laptop will do the great job even for today's standards. The laptop is incredibly fast and it's good for all basic daily tasks and even more. The 17-inch display with 1080p resolution, it still offers a very good and quality picture. And the current specs I think are still great for today's standards. The Intel i7 CPU in combination with IMD Fire Pro M6100 GPU and 32GB of RAM will still offer a great experience. But because I want to test this laptop more and show the performance, I installed some games. And the first game on the list is Black Mesa or the new version of the Half-Life. In the Black Mesa, I set all settings to maximum and I set a 1080p or the full HD resolution. 
and under these settings the frame rate is between a 40 and 50 but also very often the frame rate is over 60. You better turn up. You better be there when I shake. Watch me rocking if I can't stop. If I should fall, just go ahead. Go and catch me, baby. Well, the next game on the list is Far Cry 5. In the Far Cry 5 I used medium settings and 1080p or full HD resolution. And under these settings the GPU memory goes a little bit over 2GB, but the game is working normally, without any problems. The frame rate in the Far Cry 5 is good and very stable, and mostly is between 30 and 40. Well, the next game on the list is GTA 5. In the GTA 5, mostly I used high and very high settings and 1080p resolution. And under these settings, the GTA 5 is working perfectly well. The frame rate is very stable and mostly is between 30 and 40, but sometimes may go between 40 and 50. And the next game on the list is Tomb Raider from 2013. In the Tomb Raider I used a Full HD or 1080p resolution and all settings to maximum. Under all maxed out settings the frame rate is between a 40 and 50, but very often the frame rate goes between 50 and 60. And the last game on the list is the Prototype 2. In Prototype 2 I set all settings to the maximum and I used a Full HD or 1080p resolution. The frame rate mostly is about 50, but very often will go over 60. You better turn up. You better be there when I shake. Watch me rocking if I can't stop. If I should fall, just go ahead, go and catch me, baby. Ooh, well, and this is all about this Dell Precision M6600. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to back some touch in function again. Also, if you want to support me to grow this channel, you can press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bring a bass, we might be